Welcome to Just in Time CME, a continuing education video uh, hosted by Children's Hospital and Medical Center in Omaha, Nebraska, and the University of Nebraska Medical Center. This video concerns the management of a newborn with newly discovered sickle cell trait found on abnormal newborn screening. Per CCME guidelines, the review, release, and expiration date are listed here. This video is part of a research project supported by a grant from the Genetic Services Branch of the Maternal and Child Health Bureau. The research project was approved by the Institutional Review Board of the University of Nebraska Medical Center and Children's Hospital Medical Center. Children's Hospital and Medical Center is accredited by the Nebraska Medical Association's Commission on Medical Education to provide continuing medical education for physicians. Children's designates this activity for a maximum of a half an hour of Category 1 credit. Physicians should claim only their credit commensurate with the extent of their participation in this activity. Please note that while you may claim CV credit for each video only one time, we welcome you to reuse these videos as often as you need. I'm Dr. James Harper. I'm a pediatric hematologist and consultant to the Nebraska Newborn Screening Program. My email address is listed here in case you have questions. I have no pertinent disclosures. The objectives are listed here, and they are to inform you of the proper steps to conf obtain confirmatory data, to provide you with data regarding common genetic counseling issues, and then to provide you clinical guidance um, so that you can help the family of this infant now confronting this diagnosis. Our treatment goals are to confirm that the baby has sickle cell trait and not a more serious condition like sickle beta thalassemia is to provide parents information at this time uh, when they can use it for their own family planning and then their own personal health issues. It's also to remind families that sickle cell trait is common in all ethnic groups, occurring in approximately 8% of African Americans and 2.5% of Hispanics. The genetics of sickle cell trait are important. Sickle cell trait may be inherited by one uh, family member passing it on to a child, such as in the low-risk family in green. But our concern is that the same sickle cell trait may be inherited by a child whose parents are both affected or have carrier states that also uh, can result in a, um, a clinically significant double heterozygote state. In the low-risk family, there's an approximately 50% chance per pregnancy of having another trait baby. However, there's no chance of having sickle cell disease or one of the more serious double heterozygote states. In the high-risk family, each pregnancy faces a 50% chance of sickle cell trait, but a 25% chance of sickle cell disease. And thus, this is a family who needs to be identified so that they can make appropriate family planning choices. Many times we'll deal with a single unwed mother who has uh, no father involved. The mother's status may be known from her obstetric records or some previous testing. So what to do now? First, confirm her test results by history. If she has not been tested or does not have a recollection of a discrete time when she might have been tested, offer her testing now. Even though it's not as good as having both parents involved, it will give her some idea of her risk of having additional children with either the trait or the disease. Again, then, offer the mother and her family genetic counseling. Oftentimes, the mother may be the oldest of her sibling strip, and her younger siblings will not have um, their own uh, information. Remember, in Nebraska, newborn screening program began screening for sickle cell disease only in November of 1996. And thus, the oldest children are now approximately eight years old. Um, and so many of the people of childbearing years have no idea of their status. This is the recommended screening algorithm for sickle cell-related hemoglobinopathies published by the American College of Medical Genetics. You'll note here at the red arrow, the infant has already had the newborn screen. In Nebraska, newborn screening is done by um, IEF uh, or HPLC. 
um, HPLC done at uh, Perkin Elmer. Um, the next step is to confirm this finding by an alternate method. So if the baby had HPLC testing done, which is the methodology currently used, then we would use isotropic focusing. This can be avoided uh, or simplified by, for the primary care doctor by simply ordering the uh, hemoglobin confirmation newborn test at the regional lab, and they will uh, handle it from there. If this is confirmed, no further testing is required, and the child can be managed according to well baby uh, care standards um, of current day. This is a copy of the American College of Medical Genetics Act sheet for um, sickle cell trait. FAS is the pattern and sickle cell carrier. The differential diagnosis listed here. The differential diagnosis is primarily that of sickle cell beta thalassemia versus sickle cell trait. <clears throat> this act sheet um, will list the top, the items you should take care of now. We'll give you a set of diagnostic evaluation studies and clinical considerations. While the vast majority of people with sickle cell trait have no clinical significance, older children and adults may have hematuria due to uh, injury to the uh, kidney. They may have splenic infarction and are at increased risk of southern death uh, associated with severe hypoxia, extreme physical exertion, and dehydration. Um, and thus, these families need to understand uh, that this may uh, limit their child's uh, activity uh, or sports participation. Um, this is, again, the uh, actions you should be taking now. So things to do now. First, to contact the family and to inform them of the screening result to offer education and reassurance that infants and young children do not have clinical problems related to sickle cell trait. Repeat the screen or confirmatory res result by an alternate assay. And again, um, ordering the hemoglobin confirmation newborn is the appropriate uh, test. Offer family members referral for hemoglobin testing and genetic counseling and then report these findings to the newborn screening program. Testing for parents includes a CBC and a hemoglobin, hemoglobin electrophoresis. Um, the interpretation of this is in the newborn or in the confirmatory testing age um, is FAS in which there's more fetal than adult and there's more adult hemoglobin than sickle hemoglobin. And this would be consistent with a diagnosis of sickle cell trait. Parental testing should have a normal CBC and hemoglobin electrophoresis showing pattern with hemoglobin A and S only. And this would be consistent with sickle cell trait. Other parental findings of concern include the double heterozygote states in which they inherit one gene for sickle cell and one gene for hemoglobin C or hemoglobin uh, D or beta thalassemia trait any one of those genes being harmless by themselves, but when co-inherited with sickle cell trait, result in clinically significant problems. So where to go for patient information? The Centers for Disease Control has an excellent website on staying healthy with sickle cell disease and a, um, a small section on sickle cell trait and guidance for uh, people's um, health and uh, personal future behavior. Reference sources include the Nebraska Newborn Screening Program, hematology consultation with pediatric hematology at these following numbers, 402-559-7257, uh, and genetic counseling, which can be arranged at 402-559-6418. And then guidance for parents. Sickle cell trait is common. It is rarely clinically harmful. The uh, people with sickle cell trait should maintain hydration and cool down periods should be used regularly during exercise. 
Sickle cell trait will not result in disability for their baby. Sickle cell trait is something that should be remembered, and thus they should write this down in their baby book or other records so that when the child is older and wants to have their own family, they understand what their risks are. The parents of these children should be advised of their risk of having subsequent child with sickle cell disease, if any. Uh, this is particularly important as it has been frequently described where a first child will be born and with sickle cell trait and the family will be appropriately reassured, but their risk of subsequent children with sickle cell disease is not mentioned. And then they go on to have a child with sickle cell disease and um, are shocked by that outcome. Thank you very much for your attention. Please um, note that your feedback regarding this video is highly appreciated. To leave feedback, to suggest new topics, learn about other CME activities here at Children's, and to register for the CME credit for this video, go to www.childrensomaha.org slash medical education. Children's Omaha, all one word, dot org slash medical education. Again, all one word. Thank you very much. Good day.